हाय फ्रेंड्स दिस इज जयश्री पटेल लव इज अ सेट ऑफ इमोशन्स एंड बिहेवियर्स कैरेक्टराइज बाय इंटमेसी पैशन एंड कमिटमेंट इट इन्वॉल्व्स केयर क्लोजनेस प्रोटेक्टिवनेस अट्रैक्शन एंड ट्रस्ट लव कैन वेरी इन इंटेंसिटी एंड कैन चेंज ओवर टाइम इट इज एसोसिएटेड विद अ रेंज ऑफ पॉजिटिव इमोशन्स इंक्लूडिंग हैप्पीनेस एक्साइटमेंट life satisfaction but it can also result in negative emotions such as jealousy and stress when it comes to love some people would say it is one of the most important human emotions yet despite being one of the most studied behaviors it is still the least understood for example researchers debate whether love is a biological or cultural phenomenon love is most likely influenced by both biological drives and cultural influences the way we express and experience love is also influenced by our personal conceptions of love how do you know what are some of the sign of love Researchers have made distinctions between feelings of liking and loving another person. According to psychologist, romantic love is made up of three elements: attachment, caring, intimacy. Attachment: needing to be with another person. and desiring Caring. physical contact and approval valuing the other person's happiness and needs as much as your own intimacy sharing private thoughts feelings and desires with other person based on this view of romantic love we develop two questionnaires to measure these variables while people tend to view people they like as pleasant love is marked by being devoted possessive and confiding in one another types of love not all form of love are the same these types of love include friendship this type of love involves liking someone and sharing a certain degree of intimacy infatuation this is a form of love that often involves intense feeling of attraction without a sense of commitment it often takes place early in a relationship and may deepen into a more lasting love passionate love this type of love is marked by intense feeling of attraction it often involves an idealization of the other person and a need to maintain constant physical closeness compassionate love this form of love is marked by trust affection and commitment unrequited love this form of love happens when one person loves another who does not return those feelings is love biological or cultural some researchers suggest that love is a basic human emotions just like happiness or anger while other believe that it is a cultural phenomenon that arises partly due to social pressure and expectations Researchers has found that romantic love exists in all cultures which suggests that love has a strong biological component it is a part of human nature to seek out and find love however culture can significantly affect how individuals think about experience and display romantic love how to practice love there is no single way to practice love every relationship is unique 
and each person brings their own history and needs some things that you can do to show love to the people you are care about be willing to be vulnerable be willing to forgive do your best and be willing to apologize when you make mistakes let them know that you care listen to what they have to say prioritize spending time with the other person reciprocate loving gesture and acts of kindness recognize and acknowledge their good qualities share things about yourself show affection show unconditional love impact of love love attachment and affection have an important impact on well-being and quality of life tips of cultivating love lasting relationships are marked by deep level of trust commitment some things that you can do to help cultivate loving relationship include try loving kindness meditation loving kindness meditation is a unique often used to promote self acceptance and reduce stress but it has also been shown to promote a variety of positive emotions and improve interpersonal relationships it involves meditating while thinking about a person you love or care about concentrating on warm feeling and your desire for their well-being and happiness communicate everyone's need are different the best way to ensure that your needs and your loved ones needs are met is to talk about them helping another person feel love involves communicating that love to them through words and deeds some ways to do this include showing that you care making them feel special telling them they are loved and doing things for them tackle conflict in a healthy way never arguing is not necessary a sign of healthy relationship more often than not it means that people are avoiding an issue rather than discussing it rather than avoid conflict focus on hashing out issues in ways that are healthy in order to move a relationship forward in a positive way potential pitfalls as said the course of love never did run smooth no relationship is perfect so there will always be problems conflicts misunderstanding and disappointments that can lead to distress or heartbreak so while love is associated with the host of positive emotions it can also be accompanied by a number of negative feelings as well some of the potential pitfalls of experiencing love include anxiety depression increased stress jealousy possessiveness sadness while people are bound to experience some negative emotions associated with love it can become problematic if those negative feelings outweigh the positive or if they start to interfere with either person's ability to function normally relationship counseling can be helpful in situations where couples need help coping with miscommunication stress or emotional issues history of love research on love has grown tremendously but early explorations into the nature and reason for love drew considerable criticism despite early resistance research has revealed the importance of love in both child development and adult health there are two basic types of love compassionate love passionate love compassionate love is characterized by mutual respect attachment affection and trust Compassionate love usually develops out of feelings of mutual understanding and a shared respect for one another. Passionate love is characterized by intense emotions, sexual attraction, anxiety, and affection. 
when these intense emotions are reciprocated people feel elated and fulfilled unreciprocated love leads to feeling of despondency and disappear passionate love is transitory usually lasting between 6 and 30 months passionate love arises when cultural expectation encourage falling in love when the person meets one's preconceived ideas of ideal love and when one experiences heightened physiological influence in the presence of the other person ideally passionate love then leads to compassionate love which is far more enduring while most people desire relationships that combine the security and stability with intense passionate love and this is rare do people sometimes need help with love one of the most common assessment given by doctors and therapists is called a global assessment of functioning this assessment is designed to look at all aspects of person's life in order to see how well the individual is functioning love falls under the umbrella of social functioning problems with love and in personal relationship can be an indicator of major problems so most professionals take this information very seriously most doctor and psychologist agree that difficulty with love relationship ranks as a serious medical condition that demands some type of intervention one type of therapy that used to help with interpersonal difficulties such as love is interpersonal therapy which focuses on attachment and solving problems with interpersonal relationships it's a short term therapy based on the belief that issues in our interpersonal lives may manifest in psychological disorder and symptoms such as depression ten tips for a happy relationship talk constructively how you say things is as important as what you are saying if you and your partner are having a disagreement don't just attack them or go all out criticizing why not try using i statements by saying i feel rather than you always you are taking responsibility for your emotions and your partner won't feel like they are blame for everything try three tips for improving communication with your partner listen to each other listening is such an important tool in relationship Sometimes we find it hard to hear what our partner is saying because we are so wrapped up in our own emotions. Remember that communication works two ways. Listening to your partner is the only way to know what's really going on with them. Don't bottle things up. If something has upset you, you are not doing yourself or your partner any favors by keeping it to yourself this is only likely to cause resentment to build up that will come out in other ways if it's something that really matters to you talk about it keep things fresh making the effort to keep things fun and interesting in your relationship can really make a big difference it's easy to get complacent about having someone in your life but this kind of attitude can also lead to boredom and dissatisfaction let your partner know you appreciate having them around by surprising them occasionally let go of the little stuff although it's good to talk when you have got something on your mind your relationship is going to be like a battleground if you can't ever let things slide if it's something that all things consider doesn't actually matter that much why not just forget about it nobody is perfect and you will probably do stuff that your partner finds enjoying too 
appreciate what you have many people end up looking outside their relationship because they think there is someone out there who is better for them relationships aren't about finding the perfect partner whatever that means they are about allowing the connection you do have to develop and grow the strongest relationships are usually the ones that have been given the time to flourish give each other space although it's great spending quality time together don't forget you both need to nurture your interest and friendship couples who spend every moment in each other's pocket can easily begin to feel unfulfilled when they realize that their personal interests have started to slip allow each other to spend time on the things you enjoy separately when you reconvince as a couple you will be pleased to see each other and have lots to talk about try our four steps for setting healthy boundaries in your relationship don't put too much pressure on yourself it's easy to worry about whether your relationship is as good as it should be just as we can get wrapped up in having the best clothes or latest gadget we can worry about having relationship that are as exciting and passionate as the ones we see depicted in movies or hear about in songs relationships aren't about constantly feeling butterflies we all have our own unique ways of experiencing them and you will know what's right for you enjoy yours for what it is and be grateful that it's there avoid jealousy and build trust jealousy can destroy relationships and nothing is less attractive than the green eye monster if you are worried about your partner isn't giving you enough attention try the open honest approach rather than acting out or accusing them of looking elsewhere building mutual trust is the key to banishing unhealthy emotions and remaining stronger together work on it it's not always the most popular way of thinking about them but relationship can be work they need to be nurtured and given the space and attention they deserve communication isn't something to do only occasionally it should be a constant it's only by not taking your relationship for granted that your connection will stay strong but the rewards as everyone in a happy relationship knows are more than worth the effort how to have happy and long relationship understand your needs and wants understanding your own emotional and physical needs before you enter a relationship is important because you will need to be able to communicate these needs to your significant other if you want to have a successful relationship you might already have a clear idea of what you need and want in a relationship but if you are unsure you can think about these questions reflect on past relationship to gain insight into why those relationship did or did not work what can these experiences tell you about your needs think about how you react to people and events for example do you tend to react emotionally find it hard to trust someone or find it difficult to express your feelings it can be helpful to be aware of these personality traits before you enter a serious relationship make sure you are in a relationship for a healthy rather than unhealthy reasons healthy reasons for being in relationship includes a desire to share love intimacy and wanting to experience personal growth providing emotional and physical support to each other and hoping to create a family it's important to note that these motivations focus on 
just on receiving love and support but also providing it for your significant other unhealthy reason for being in a relationship include having a fear of being alone being afraid of breaking up and not wanting to lose your connection to your significant other's friend or family using your significant other for security money or to get revenge or an ex or also very unhealthy reasons for being in a relationship if you enter and remain in a relationship for this reason you and your significant other will have a hard time developing a long and happy relationship and you could both be seriously hurt in the process choose your partner wisely if you are hoping to develop a happy long term relationship you need to choose your significant other carefully it's a common perception that opposites attract and researchers have found that individuals who share some common goals interest and expectation often and more satisfying relationship your personality traits don't have to be the same but if you each want different things from the relationship you will have a hard time making it last think about whether your differences complement each other for example someone who is more impulsive might balance someone who is more of a planner be realistic entering a relationship expecting there to be no difficult times or challenges in unrealistic the early passion and the sense of infatuation you feel might fade but with time and effort you can build a deeper and more meaningful relationship don't try to change your significant other while you might be able to persuade your significant other to pick up dirty laundry or walk the dog thinking that will be able to serious change his personality views or behavior can set up your relationship for failure in particular experts suggest that you will not be able to change his personality traits or ideas ideas about religion your significant other's views on having children his or her temper and the way they act when they angry whether the person is introverted or extroverted your significant other's interests activities and hobbies your significant other's relationship with her and his family build friendship if you are hoping for a long and happy relationship concentrate on building friendship with your partner experts have found that couples who are friends are happier and more likely to stick together if you don't want to spend time together your relationship won't be very successful take time to explore each other's interest and hobbies it might initially seems like a sacrifice to do something you don't want to but your partner will appreciate your efforts and be more willing to do something you enjoy next time you will also feel more connected to her and be able to better understand her personality desire and needs try to identify your common interest and pursue this together for example if you both enjoy the outdoors go on a camping trip together don't feel like you have to do everything together couples sometimes feel like they need to pursue every activity together but this can make you and your partner feel claustrophobic don't stop spending time with friends or family keep up the hobbies you had before you enter the relationship be generous with one another people who are generous are willing to put other people's thought feeling and interest about their own researchers have found that when partners are generous with each other they are better able to create a lasting relationship share what you have 
This might be something as simple as being willing to split a desert or something more significant such as your resources and time. Don't be generous to get something in return. People show true generosity aren't doing it because they want something from another person. For example, don't give an expensive gift because you expect to receive one in return. Don't feel rushed. People entering into relationship may feel rushed to get to more advanced stage in their relationship by being intimate quickly, by moving in with each other or getting married soon after meeting each other. While it can be exciting to think about the happy ending you hope to have and rush to meet it, taking the time to make sure both you and your partner are on the same page about your relationship will only solidify it. You will both be more confident and happy in the relationship if you don't feel pressure or force into something quickly. The better you know each other and the more you develop your relationship, the more likely it will be to succeed. There are many factors that one needs to consider when choosing a life partner. The most important aspect is to consider things that are crucial to you. Find someone who you can connect with easily. It is very important to choose somebody who you can easily strike a conversation with. This way, you can enjoy doing things and talking about them together without getting bored. Potential partner with same interest. Selecting someone who shares a lot of common interest with you will work in your favor. Remember that all your interests don't really have to be the same, but some would do. When you decide to spend your life with someone, you must look at things that the two of you would love to do together. For example, if you are a movie buff, you would ideally like to be with someone who enjoys the movies as well. This will make your life interesting. Consider your partner's intellect. If you are a laid-back person and your partner is an overachiever, that could lead to a threat in your marriage. You must see eye to eye on how both of you are able to think and process things. It's okay to have standards. While choosing a life partner, you need to consider your and your family standard. Though it's okay to choose someone who probably does not belong to the same class of society as yours, make sure that he or she is not completely off the mark. You should have respect for one another. You obviously cannot spend your life with someone who has no respect for you or your dreams or goals or your personality. So choose someone who will acknowledge you for the rest of your life. Is your potential trustworthy? In this day and age, it is extremely important to choose someone you can trust. You definitely cannot lead a happy marriage if you cannot trust each other or have faith. Spend time together. Just as important as it is to have similar interests, it is also crucial to be with someone who gives you enough time and who you would love to spend time with. Honesty is one of those things we know is a good habit. But we can really stumble a lot in trying to actually put into practice. But when it comes to our relationship, Having open and honest communication is necessary to create a healthy, sustainable partner. What do we mean by honesty in relationship? Honesty is the quality of always speaking the truth and being totally authenticate, straightforward and transparent 
in our words and actions. It involves a few key practices. Never lying, never hiding the truth, and never purposefully or misdirectly people from the truth. Honesty in a relationship means always telling your partner the truth and being totally open with them both for the big things and the little things if you are avoiding talking to your partner about something such as thing that are bothering you in the relationship something you did that you know your partner will be upset about or how you really feel about the things you talk about together then you aren't being honest being honest means being your true self around your partner never hiding who you are what you think how you feel why honesty is so important in a relationship honesty is the foundation for trust in a relationship and trust is necessary for a relationship to function and thrive when you are always honest with someone it tells them that they can trust you and the things you say it helps them know they can believe your promises and commitments relationships are built on trust so honesty is very important in a relationship We depend on our partner being our port in storm a person who we can trust with our thoughts feelings and heart being honest with your partner also facilitates healthy communication which is also necessary for a functional relationship couples need to be able to talk to each other openly and be real with each other That's what true connection is all about. That commitment to being honest also means that both people will be proactive about addressing any tension, conflict or issues in the relationship, bringing them up to their partner for discussion. Relationships flourish when partners trust each other. to be honest and open to resolving conflict on the other hand relationships struggle when trust is broken is honesty always the best policy yes honesty is always necessary in a relationship 100% of the time each lie that your partner catches you in weaken your bond turning you from teammates to opponents in an invisible conflict where your word is never taken seriously no need to be brutal when presenting your opinion or answering questions honestly that you know might hurt for example if your partner just cook you the worst meal you have ever had in your life and ask you what you think of the food You should be honest. Don't say you love it when you don't. But recommends avoiding unnecessarily hurtful statement and springing for kind of ways to convey the same sentiment. For example, I so appreciate that you made dinner tonight. Does it taste a little bitter to you or it's a little bitter tasting to me? So I think There is some room for improvement but you clearly put a lot of efforts into this and I so appreciate it when you make dinner Secrets versus privacy Sometimes couple can get a little wrap up in a trying to make sure they know absolutely everything about each other For example someone might insist on sharing an email address or knowing exactly where their partner is at all times or they might feel entitled to tell their partner how cool they think various celebrities are even if the comments hurt their partner's feeling clearly 
there are times when sharing too much could actually be hurting your independence and sense of self or worse hurting your partner it is essential to understand the difference between secret and privacy think of it this way privacy is a boundary around one's own thoughts ideas and past experiences that don't directly involve one's partner a secret is something that is misleading in some way and intentionally kept hidden from them for fear of judgment or retaliation partners don't need to tell each other absolutely everything in order to be considered honest but they do need to be transparent about information that's going to directly affect each other's well-being a good rule of thumb is that if you are actively avoiding telling your partner something because you are worried about their reaction you are keeping a secret and intentionally being dishonest and if your partner ask you something directly you do need to do tell the truth how to build more trust and honesty in a relationship be consistent do the things you say you are going to do and be someone your partner can depend on building trust happens through actions not just words show off when you say you will do the things you promise nothing destroys trust and builds resentment quite like empty or broken promises don't commit to things you can't do people think they should say they can make it and show up for another person when they can't because they don't want to disappoint better to be honest now and disappoint a little in the moment than disappoint later and diminish trust prioritize communication make communicating with each other an open priority in your relationship have a conversation and agree that you will both be open with each other about how you are feeling what you need what's working and what's not by establishing this example you make honesty easier to practice for both of you lead by example is your partner close off or isn't always honest about how they feel getting a close off person to open up take patience not pushiness a great way to help them feel comfortable being honest is to simply lead by example tell them how you are feeling or what you are up to and allow them to follow your lead when your partner sees that you are always being real with them they will feel like it's safe or for them to be real with you avoid judging each other for the things you say if someone is honest with their partner about how they feel and then gets shut down or sharply at for what they say they are less likely to want to be the honest in the future so when someone is being honest and vulnerable avoid judging them or punishing them for it that means avoiding calling what they said stupid or immediately telling them why they are wrong to feel the way they do you want to create a space where people feel safe expressing themselves this is what breeds honesty if someone expresses something that hurts you tell them you appreciate their honesty and then discuss why you are feeling hurt was there another way they could have told you that would have hurt less let them know if someone said something that you really wish they hadn't said you can let them know that that's information you would prefer not to hear from them just remember that your partner should be able to tell you difficult things 
that's part of being in a relationship address the breaches when trust has been broken in your relationship both partners need to direct real healing attention to the relationship to rebuild it simple secrets to be a happy in relationship there are couples that look so great together their spiritual kinship mutual respect and tenderness are so obvious partners who have found the key to success in a relationship are like a good wine over time their love becomes only stronger more exciting and every day is like a new one full of fresh emotions and feelings bright side reveals to you the simple secret of such couples in a list of useful tips that will bring happiness into a relationship be yourself be honest we all want to be better than we really are we conceal our mistakes and those stories we would like to forget but there is no need to try to be perfect just be yourself many of us hide behind mask afraid to show people who we really are it won't lead to an honest and uncomplicated relationship stay positive cheerful people always bring happiness and positive emotions everyone wants to have such people in their lives on the other hand constant discontent complaints and nagging lead to negative emotions killing the mood and destroy people's relationship be thoughtful and support each other everyone has bad days that kill the mood and lower their self esteem let your partner feel your support show that you care it's not so difficult and your other half will feel much better also pay attention to the wants and need of your partner you should admit that your beloved is not your reflection or your property respect your partner's wants no matter how different they are from your own demonstrate your love it's very important to remind your partner how much you appreciate everything he or she does for you be careful even for the smallest thing Don't take everything for granted and tell your partner that you treasure every single things in your relationship. Show how much you need your partner. Don't hesitate to demonstrate your love and care because it's essential for building a strong and deep connection between the two of you. Let your partner feel how special he or she is to you as much as possible. give each other space two people can't be together 24 by 7 don't stand in the way of your partner's hobbies and don't give up yours you fell in love with your partner the way he or she was and your beloved fell in love with you and accepted all your hobbies don't let jealousy in try not to be jealous because This shows that you admit your insecurities and your fear. There is no need to drive your partner crazy with your jealousy. Your mistrust hurts the feeling of your partner. You push your partner forward what you are so afraid of. And what if your partner is jealous of you? Try to calm him or her down. Let your partner know how much you love him. Try to carefully make an innocent joke about his or her fear. Let your partner see the unwillingness of all the worries. Don't let jealousy ruin your relationship. Don't try to change each other. Love and accept each other the way you are. accept his or her features and habits because these little things make your partner unique it's pointless to be offended by these features but if it's a bad habit and it will be only beneficial then just discuss this matter with your partner without any arguments 
create memories together there is nothing that will make you closer than creating memories together traveling dance classes competitions do what you find exciting and fun together more often fill your life with something bright and cool watching tv together will hardly become a happy memory for the two of you you already know that you want to have a life filled with love receiving it giving it surrounded by it but you also know that the love you have found so far isn't quite as satisfying as you would like it doesn't fill you up or give you genuine happiness that is lasting what you did not know is that people are confused about what true love is and that what you want is unconditional love or real love you want to find it fill up with it and give it to others so how can you find real love what is real love almost no one asks that question instead they ask what is love nearly every day most people ask some form of the quiz question and it tends to confuse their brain why because it's the wrong question the word love is an impossible mess ask 100 people for a definition of love and you get 100 different answer most of them confusing the real question is what is unconditional love that is so different from what most people have ever known that we are going to call it real love real love is unconditional love that is the kind of love we all want in real love there is no disappointment impatience irritation or anger now that is different so different that most people have never truly felt it now we know the answer to the real question what is real love real love is caring about the happiness of another person without wanting anything in return what is unconditional love somehow we recognize that anything other than real love isn't really love at all we recognize that it's an imitation of the real thing suddenly we understand all the pain we have experienced in relationship there is only one kind of love that can fill us up and heal our pain and make us whole what is real happiness when i use the word happiness i do not mean the brief and superficial pleasure that comes from money or any power nor is it the conditional approval we earn from others when we behave as they want neither is it the temporary feeling of satisfaction we experience in the absence of immediate conflict or disaster real happiness is not the feeling we get from being entertained or making people do what we want real happiness is a profound and lasting sense of peace and fulfillment that deeply satisfies and enlarges the soul it doesn't go away when circumstances are difficult it survives and even grows during hardship and struggle true happiness is our entire reason to live and it can only be obtained as we find real love and share it with others so here are the characteristics of real love love means saying goodbye to expectations sure we all want people to behave the way we want them to we want them to be more affectionate or more outgoing or smarter all of these things are expectations expectations are just your requirement for acceptability of loving someone but true love has no expectation it simply loves as is love doesn't play the victim role or blame others love doesn't think others are out to get them love doesn't think their loved ones are wrong love works together it takes responsibility it forgives and allows other people's action to be their journey love doesn't take things personally love includes letting go love doesn't equal possession just as the saying goes if you love something set it free if it come back 
it years if it doesn't then it never was there is truth so that love allows people their freedom it doesn't hold tightly and crush their wings in attempt to keep them true love doesn't want to possess it is willing to set you free if you want to be love doesn't require you to continue a relationship you may love someone very much but you may not be compatible with them or they may drive you crazy with their continued disregard for your feelings you can still love them but that doesn't mean you have to be with them love doesn't mean that you have to stay you can leave the relationship and love them anyway love has no room for jealousy like possession jealousy doesn't equal love we think that if we are not jealous of our loved one that it means that we don't love them true love has confidence in the quality of the relationship it knows that the other person is happy and content coming back to you and only you love is not needing but wanting one of the things we try to teach kids is that there is a clear difference between a want and a need needing someone is a feeling based in fear your fear that you can't live without them so you need them and remember fear is the opposite of love wanting someone in your life gives them the freedom to live but still shows them to love them love is an action not just a feeling humans tend to be addicted to intense emotions especially when it feels good so when we are in love we want to feel that way forever but guess what that higher than cloud 9 feelings goes away after a while that doesn't mean you don't love the person anymore it just mean that it's not new anymore so that's where the action need to kick in show the person you love them don't just assume they know love is unconditional the word unconditional means that there are no expectations or limitations set to love unconditionally is a difficult thing and most humans aren't good at that but true love really does love without trying to change the other person love means putting other people's need equal to or before your own while people may be selfish for survival purposes this doesn't serve as well in relationships if you don't put other people's need at least equal to your own they will grow resentful real love truly genuinely cares about other people's happiness and will go to great lengths to make people feel valued love is the highest vibration emotion that there is science has proven that emotions like love and fear have a very different vibrations they can actually measure them love vibrates very fast whereas fear based emotion think jealousy possessive hatred greed etc vibrate very slowly when you love completely and unconditionally there is no fear involved the vibrations of love make you feel good at all times love requires attention love doesn't ignore it doesn't look the other way it wants to be present and be together when people are in love sometimes they think that they don't have to do any more work but real love actually enjoys giving attention to another person it feels good and doesn't see giving attention to another person as a chore love understand and accept differences let's face it we are all different even identical twins aren't exactly the same they have different experiences and outlook about the world real love doesn't make other people wrong for being different when people truly love another person they accept their differences love makes you feel good not bad many people confuse being in a relationship with love just because you are in a relationship doesn't mean there is true love present if there is jealousy possessiveness 
constant fighting, abuse. That is not love. Those are fear-based emotions and actions. Love has empathy. Empathy is the ability to put yourself into another person's shoes and see a situation from his or her point of view. Love has deep empathy. When you hurt, I hurt. People who truly love one another don't want to hurt them. They want them to feel good. They care about their feelings and try everything they can to make them feel valued and worthy. There is a very big difference between infatuation and being in love. Infatuation is when you first see someone that you are attracted to and immediately feel there is a connection based on that. Whereas, love is knowing the good and bad of someone and still loving them all the time. By knowing the difference between being infatuated with someone and loving them, you will know if you are with the right person. Infatuation is a fast fantasy. Being infatuated with someone requires no thinking. You do not know anything about the person that you are attracted to. This is a very quick attraction that feels like it hits you over the head. As soon as you see this person, you are already imagining about your future together without knowing anything about them. You already believe that things are going to work out for the both of you based on appearances only. Infatuation is automatically filling in the blanks for that person and hoping that things will work out of the way you want. Love is a reality that takes time. Being infatuated is an instant crush on someone that you see for the first time. Love, on the other hand, can take more time to get to that stage. Everyone is different in how long it takes to fall in love. Love requires meeting someone for the first time and not knowing what to expect. It may take a few dates to realize that you are in love. Love is a seeing into the person's humanity, like where their strength and weaknesses lie. You love them on a good day and you like them on a bad day. Infatuation is expecting perfection. When you first look at your love interest, you already believe that they are perfect without knowing them. You think that because they look attractive, it means their personality will be the same way. In our mind, they must always look beautiful, strong, courageous. But in reality, people have a lot of sides and you cannot choose which one you would prefer to make an appearance. If we see any imperfections in our partner, it will destroy the illusion we place on our partner that made us happy. The reality of a true partner is seeing all of their imperfections and loving them anyway. Love is a being real. Love is all about being comfortable in revealing your true self. We feel comfortable in exposing memories that may be embarrassing or hard to talk about. We also reveal our true selves in the way we look. Our partner has seen how we look without makeup or with when we wake up. It is the same as we get older as we are not going to look the same as when we met our partner. We will either lose our hair or it will go grey. We will gain weight, get wrinkle, lose joints etc. If someone really love you, they would not care how you look because they love you too much. You will always be beautiful to that person. Infatuation makes us want self-perfection. While infatuation makes us only see the good in our partner, it also means giving our partners a perfect image of ourselves. We want the illusion that we created to stick. This can mean only telling our partners the good thing about our day or going to extremes to look perfect all the time, like wearing too much makeup to hide blemishes. 
वी आर गिविंग अवर पार्टनर अ सुपरफिशियल सेल्फ इन फ्यर दैट दे विल लीव यू एंड अवर एल्यूजन विल बी शैटर्ड द लव यू टू हैव फॉर ईच अदर विल मीन मोर दैन एनी फ्लॉज लव मीन्स दैट यूर पार्टनर नोज दैट यू आर नॉट परफेक्ट एंड कैन एक्सेप्ट दैट लव इज टाइमलेस लव मीन्स दैट वॉट यू फील फॉर ईच अदर विल नेवर गो अवे नो मैटर वेर यू आर योर पार्टनर मे हैव टू गो ऑन अ बिजनेस ट्रिप दैट कैन टेक मंथ बट ब्रेकिंग अप इज नॉट एन ऑप्शन फॉर यू गाइज लव डज नॉट हैव एन एक्सपायरेशन डेट इन दैट यू बोथ वॉन्ट फॉर एवर विथ ईच अदर इन फैचुएशन ऑन द अदर हैंड इज जस्ट अ फ्लीटिंग मोमेंट You may feel intensely about that person but you cannot imagine being with that person for the rest of your life. Infatuation is obsession. People who are infatuated may think that they are in love with their love interest because how much they care for them. You may feel like you need to call that person to check up on them or even follow them. They could be out with their friends but you make your partner feel guilty for not being with you this can be very tiring for you to be on constant alert with your partner and not trusting them this type of love is really an obsession love means being willing to let that person go to have time alone love also means that you are calmer and can feel the love you have for that person uplift you since you feel secure in your relationship being in love is having the confidence to know that the person you see when you wake up in the morning is the one that you want to be with for the rest of your life if you like my video please do remember to like and subscribe very soon we'll come with new video till then take care everyone bye